Hi, I'm Alistair. I design escape rooms and this is a video about electromagnetic locks or mag locks. Now, as well as being used in everyday security doors in offices and other buildings, mag locks are a key piece of hardware in almost every escape room. They're used to control the flow of the game, gating off certain areas or keeping parts hidden or inaccessible until players have solved a puzzle or met some other requirement. And a high-tech escape room game might use as many as 30 or 40 mag locks in a game. Now, they come in different styles and they work in slightly different ways. So in this video, I just wanted to share some tips and tricks from my experiences of working with them. So let's start with this, which is an absolutely standard bar style mag lock that you might commonly find installed above a security door. It has two wires coming out of it. The black wire connects to ground and the red wire connects to a positive voltage. Now, most mag locks run on 12 volts DC. Sometimes they run on 24 volts, but this is a 12 volt mag lock. So I'm going to connect 12 volt supply here. And as soon as I do that, an electrical current starts passing through the coils inside the mag lock, which creates a strong magnetic field that will attract any nearby magnetic objects, like this screwdriver, for example. And when I cut the power, you'll see the magnetic field stops. Now, the way to install a mag lock like this is that the mag lock itself remains stationary and you attach it to the frame of the door. And then on the door itself, you install this metal plate known as an armature plate. And you want to position this so that it touches this part of the mag lock when the door is closed. One mistake that people sometimes make when installing the armature plate is to fasten it too securely to the door. You actually want to screw this in so that it has a, a little bit of play, a little bit of wiggle room, so that when it comes close to the mag lock, it's able to snap flush into position like this. That's how you'll get the, the strongest hold. And when the mag lock is powered up, like that, uh, the attractive force between the maglock and the armature will keep the door held securely in place. So the strength of maglocks is measured in pounds or kilograms, and this lock is rated at 600 pounds, or about 300 kilograms of holding force. So a single one of these locks is generally sufficient to hold a single door closed. Um, there's no way I can budge that armature blade off that. So this style of maglock is described as a fail-safe maglock, and that means that if the power is cut for any reason, the lock releases and any door that it was securing opens. So it's impossible for anyone to become trapped behind it, which is a crucial safety consideration in the event of a power cut, for example. You'll notice actually that as the power is cut, the armature actually pops off a little bit, uh, and that is due to this little spring popper here. So you position the armature plate so that that faces the mag lock. Uh, the mag lock. Uh, after the power is cut, there's actually still some residual magnetism in the bar here for a little while. So this little popper helps just spring the lock open as soon as the lock is released. Now this next one is also a fail-safe mag lock, but it's smaller so it has less holding force. Once again it has two connections and it also runs on 12 volts. So if I power this up like that, you'll see that I've got the smaller armature which will stick quite securely onto there. This one has a holding force of about 150 kilograms. So that's half that of its bigger brother, but it's still strong enough to hold a cupboard door or drawer shut. And in fact, I cannot make that armature budge at all. Now, these smaller locks are very convenient and they're cheaper than the larger full-size locks as well. But there are a few considerations you need to consider when using them because they don't have all of the same circuitry as the bigger units. 
all this unit really is is just some coils of wire wrapped around an iron core. And to understand why that matters, we need a, a very quick bit of physics. So when we supply power to the lock, what we do is we apply current which flows through the windings around the iron core and that causes a magnetic field. But when we cut the power, there's energy that's been stored in that magnetic field, which has got to go somewhere when it collapses. And that causes what's called back EMF. The energy of the magnetic field gets converted back into electrical energy, which can cause a voltage spike in the circuitry. And that can cause damage to any other components that are connected. So for example, if you're controlling a maglock like this from an Arduino, that would be very sensitive to that kind of voltage spike. Now you can't prevent back EMF, but it can be suppressed. And a common way to do that is to put a diode in parallel across the coil. Now, if we go back and look at our full size maglock again, there's a little compartment at the end here. And if I just lift that up, you'll see that there's actually a little bit of extra circuitry contained in this maglock here. And crucially, one of the components that's shown here is a little diode there. That is a flyback diode, and it's positioned across the windings of the coil, but in what's called a reverse bias. So what this means is it has no effect at all when the maglock is powered up, but when the power is removed, that diode will act to gradually dissipate any power that was stored in the maglock and safely discharge that back EMF. Now, that diode, however, is not present in these smaller units here. There's no additional circuitry here at all. Now, if you wanted to, you could add that functionality in yourself. You could just take a, a basic diode component. This is a, a 1N4001. These are very cheap. And what you could do is you could make yourself a little maglock driver circuit that had the cathode of the diode, so that's the end with the stripe, you'd point that towards the positive power connector there, and then you take the anode of the diode and you connect that to the ground line. So if I just sort of show that. Uh, so now when it's powered up, so that has no effect on the normal operation of the maglock at all. That is still very secure but what happens now is when the power is cut the uh, voltage that was stored up that was released when the magnetic field collapsed is now able to pass through the diode which is reverse biased remember and that is able to dissipate safely now if that's too much of an effort to to do then obviously you can invest in the slightly more um, expensive maglocks that have that kind of additional circuitry ever built into it. Okay, so now let's take a look at a completely different style of lock. This is a cabinet style maglock and it works in the opposite way from the previous locks. Its default state is to remain secured and you have to supply power in order to unlock it. So this is described as being fail secure in the sense that if there's a power cut for any reason, the lock will remain locked. But that means it's absolutely critical that you never use these locks to secure a physical space that a person could get trapped in. Only use them for securing drawers or small compartments. But one of the great things about them is, because they don't require continuous power to remain locked, they're great for being used in portable battery-powered props, uh, since power is only needed to be applied briefly in order to unlock it. So to understand how these work, I'm going to take the cover off and show you the insides. So what we have here is a catch on a spring. And when you push the latch into the maglock, so this would be attached to your door or whatever object it is you want to secure, and that pushes that catch there back, until it uh, catches on this point here, like that. And at this point, uh, rather than relying on any electromagnetic force, this is a purely mechanical lock here. That latch is completely caught here and we cannot remove the item at all. In order to do so, we have to 
lift this latch up here, which will allow this to be released, and the catch will be ejected. Now, I can do that manually by pressing down on this bar like this. You'll see, and it comes out. And in fact, as a useful note, if you ever do make use of these mag locks in your props, it's very useful to be able to uh, get access to that little bar there, because that's how you can always manually release them in the event of a uh, power cut or failure or something like that. But in terms of activating them uh, electronically to make them an electromagnetic lock, we need to use this solenoid here. So just as in our uh, bar style locks before, this is uh, powered by 12 volt power supply. So if I connect ground to the black line here, and then I have my 12 volt line here, when I attach this, what's going to happen is it's going to cause the solenoid here to contract, and that is going to pull the bar down, just as when I pressed it with my finger, and that is going to eject the catch, like that. Now, you'll see that I can repeat that by just uh, activating it like that. It won't do anything until the catch is reloaded again, like that and then every time it will spit it out. Now you'll notice that uh, I only need to apply power for a very brief amount of time, uh, well under half a second, in order to eject that catch. And in fact, not only do I not need to apply power for very long, but it's important that you don't apply power continuously, because these solenoids simply aren't designed to run uh, on continuous power. If I held the power down like that, quite quickly this solenoid would heat up, and then eventually it would fail and be permanently damaged. Now, if you're controlling the lock from a microprocessor, like an Arduino, uh, it's quite simple to control a brief pulse of power and then cut it off again. But what if you were triggering this manually from a trigger, let's say, that a, a button a player was pressing? How would you prevent the situation where the player just kept the button held down and continuously supplied power, how would you uh, prevent damage to the solenoid? Well, fortunately, there's a solution for that. So here's another cabinet maglock that looks almost exactly the same as the last. The only difference you might notice is that instead of having one pair of wires coming out of it, we have the red and black as before, and we also have this white and green pair. So in normal operation, this maglock works exactly the same way as the last one. It's a fail secure maglock. You can push the catch in the end there, and you can either release it by manually pressing down there, or if we connect ground and a 12 volt power supply, it will eject the catch. So let's take a look inside and see how this one differs. And what we have is exactly the same as before. We've got a solenoid here, and that's what's connected to the red and black wires. And as before, when you uh, connect 12 volt across the solenoid, it contracts, that pulls down the catch, and that would release the lock. The difference is that we now have this white and green pair of wires going to a micro switch here. Now, normally this is held in place by the top cover, so it's come out of line slightly. I'm just going to hold it there, which is where it would normally be. And the point is that this micro switch touches the, uh, the anvil of the cat here, so that when the lock is engaged like that, you can see that the, uh, the lever arm here on the switch is opened. And when the lock releases, that pushes back, it ejects the catch, but it also pushes down on the switch here. So this switch can be used to provide feedback on the state of the lock, whether it's currently uh, closed with the catch inserted, in which case the uh, lever arm there is open, or whether the catch has been ejected, in which case the lever is pushed closed. Now, the white and green wires are connected to the common and the normally closed pins. So uh, when the catch is locked like that, what that means is that this is a closed circuit. So for example, you could wire an LED in series through the, uh, the white and green wires here, 
and you could make it light up to show that the lock was locked or if it was released or not. Or we could wire these to the GPIO pins of an Arduino and remotely monitor the state of the lock as well. But what we can also do is we can actually use these to create a self-resetting power system that will prevent the solenoid being supplied with continuous power. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove the power that's going directly to the solenoid, and we're going to wire the power supply to the solenoid through that microswitch as well. So what I've got here is I've just got a, a little sort of pigtail connector. Now, unfortunately, the colours don't match the colours here. So what I've got is the white wire is now going to the red lead here, and the green wire is going to black. And what I'm going to do is going to take my original black wire and wire it now to the red wire here, which is actually connected to white. So I'm connecting black and white together in the original colour system. And I'm just going to wrap them around each other. Obviously, in real life, you'd want to, to solder these or to um, use a Wago connector or something like that. But for the purposes of demonstration, that's fine. So I've got the black and the white wires wired together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my ground line just untangle that a bit, through here to the green lead. And now I can connect my positive 12 volts to the red lead. And what's going to happen is that when the lock is inserted, this is a complete closed circuit and the power will be supplied through the solenoid, as usual, current will apply, and it will eject the catch. But then immediately afterwards, what's happened is if that switch hadn't popped out, there we go. The switch is being held closed now by the uh, the catch here, and that has cut off power as soon as the latch is released. So it's effectively a self-resetting mechanism. To In order to be able to uh, make the solenoid retract again, we're going to have to insert the catch once more to open up that switch. And now I can reapply power again to adjust it. So it's a sort of a, a safety circuit if you want, and it doesn't require any additional components at all. All you have to do is to wire the, like I say, the black wire goes into the white wire, and then you treat the red as the positive 12 volts and the green as the ground, and you've got a, um, you know, a completely self-managing circuit with a protection system around the solenoid. Now, if you have the uh, the original style lock like this, what you might notice is that actually you can insert a micro switch here. This is just a, a basic micro switch, and it's rested on these two little uh, nodules here, which are actually present even in the mag lock that wasn't designed uh, to have those um, additional wires. The points are still there, so you can actually install these in existing cabinet style mag locks if you want. Um, just get ones with the, the long arm levers like that uh, so that they touch the little anvil of the hammer there. And that's how you can have a, a self-resetting cabinet style maglock circuit. So that brings me to the end of this video. Whether you already own an escape room or perhaps you're thinking of creating one, I hope you've been able to learn some practical tips about using these very common components that you'll be able to use in the future. If you've got any questions or comments, please do write them below and I'll do my best to answer them and get back to you. Um, otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Okay, cheers, bye.